You don't make agreements with hell. The Bible says don't make agreements with hell so you have peace. God, God, there's a fight. There's a, it's a fight. The passiveness will kill you. I, I mean, the devil is, you might as well fight right where you're at because the devil is never satisfied. If he can give you a sore throat, he'll give you a tumor. I'm sorry, that's just the way he is. If he can keep you, he's such a stripper of life. You ever, you ever see how they just strip you of your weapons and strip your, he, he will take your, your marriage and he'll take your kids and he'll take your money and he'll take your, he's, he's never satisfied. So you, this sounds so, so harsh. You might as well just flat out dig right in and say, I'm just not moving. I'll die fighting, but you will not move me an inch. Now, that sounds good, but when you decide to do that, that means you've dug your feet in. There's going to be pressure on your feet, pressure on your ankles, pressure on your back, pressure on your head because it's the first thing out there. I didn't tell you there wasn't going to be pressure. But the devil somehow, his, in this generation, he, he has somehow successfully made a passive group of Christians that can live in captivity and not know it's captivity and just think, well, that's life. It's not just life. All sickness, all disease right. comes from hell itself. Amen. Period. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to accept it. You might have to fight it, but you should never accept it as that's just how it's going to be. If you're on medicine, you say, I thank you, Lord, I'm getting off my medicine. Amen. I didn't say stop taking it, because see, there's a place that you get to where you know. And don't make it your head. Many people have shipwrecked their life by thinking. I hope that don't sound bad. Thinking might be the worst thing you can do sometimes. You have to obey the Lord. I, I just, I'll give you a quick illustration about curse. Let's just say you're in unforgiveness about your mom or dad or whatever, okay? It doesn't really matter who or what. So you got this unforgiveness in your heart and you get a disease. And you say, I know the Lord. The Lord promised me healing. That's right. Amen. Okay? Well, he might have to get you to the place because it's buried so deep to where you forgive somebody before he can have access to heal you. You hear me? That means that you can be believing for healing and you're saying, I'm not getting healed and God is going after a root of bitterness in your life because that's how you got sick in the first place. And see, if you don't understand it, you'll go, well, God, pray, God, you're whining, but never forgiven. God wanting to hone in on something that needs changed in your life and all you could think about is you're sick and not see that he is the perfect physician. He is the perfect healer. He knows exactly how to get you well. And if he says, if he's not giving you a prescription, he's giving you enlightenment about what needs dealt with, you've got to work with God. You've got to work with God. And it, sometimes God's so smart, it always looks like he's talking about something that doesn't matter. And that's where you got to watch because you'll start thinking you know. That's the, the deal. Because once you start thinking you know, you're already, you're already in trouble. You're supposed to cast down every thought that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Peter, great fisherman, right? Fished for a living. Fished all night got nothing God says as if it would matter in the natural mind uh, a 15 foot boat cast your net on the other the right side as if 15 feet is going to keep you from catching fish I bet you Peter could have thought he did I've been out all night you know but nonetheless at your word I will do. Yeah. Give, you can give God. He does all that. That's God. 
Nonetheless, Lord, nonetheless, Lord. You, you might think that's stupid, but if you will do the ridiculous, God will do the supernatural. Yes. The, the word is full of people who hung by a thread like Rahab. She led her deliverance by a thread. All you need is a thread, though, if you got God. It might look hairy. It might look like you don't get out, but you don't need much if you got God. He's so powerful, you don't need much of him. A little bit of God will change your life. The walls of Jericho marched around. God said, march around once a day. On the seventh day, do it seven times. And he tells the man of God, now make him shout. No logic to that in the natural at all. But by the obedience, God did something supernatural. I'm not just saying this. I have signed contracts scared to pieces because I had a word. I've signed contracts, leases, business agreements, scared in the natural completely. But I had a word in my belly. My natural man almost never, I wish I could tell you I was all lined up, but my natural man almost never matches what God tells me. You have to, there's a place up there there's a place in God where your natural man doesn't have much say because you're obedient. You'd never raise a, wife, a knife to your, to your son to kill him if you went by your emotions. You'd never build an ark for a hundred years if you were going to be moved by your emotions. You'd never march around Jericho. You'd never cast your net on the other side. You'd never go fishing and find a coin in a fish's mouth if you went by your natural emotions. God, you say you need money and God tells you go fishing. What's funny is, and he tells a fisherman to do it. Guy fished all his life, probably never found a coin in no fish's mouth. See, you can't go by previous patterns. You can't go by previous. There, this is a new place. Some of you, God has moved you along. I, I see it in the spirit. He has moved you along and been cultivating you. But some of you are going to have to leap now. He's been cultivating you, filling you with the word. He's showing you he's with you. He fixed this. He got you that. He set these things before you that are possible. And you could see by looking at your history that he's been with you, setting you up for the win. But somewhere down the line, you're probably going to have to leap. Take the leap. God respects faith, not whining, not complaining, not looking at what's not. See, there's a, there's a side of you that, see, faith has eyes, faith has ears, and faith takes possession. You'll be with people, I, I know this because I've learned these things. These are not, you know I'm not talking to you about theory, right? Amen. This stuff's been worked, and I died some deaths working it. This, is, this isn't just, you're not getting something that just happened. I have heard God and followed Him, and somebody else said, I thought that was thunder. I didn't hear anything. He must be hearing an angel. Sometimes people never hear what you hear. I have been looked at by all the people that I love, and my wife would even tell you, there are times she did not have a clue what I was chasing. But I saw something, I heard something, and I pressed towards something and possess it. Faith takes possession. Yeah. Take possession. Take possession. 
But you have to get up and see, you see it. Now, I'm, I'm preaching here, really. You can't, you got to learn the difference between what you imagine and what faith vision is. If you're still strong in your person, you will see something and you will think it's God and it was your own imagination. That's where all the dilemmas and discouragements start. Now, that's why you bring your deeds to the light, to somebody, not just anybody, somebody. So they, see, if you're, pray, I pray that this is a safe place for everybody. God help me. I remember taking what I, my vision to the wrong people. And I'm telling you, it was like the devil got the biggest, hottest dagger and put it in my spirit. And all the life force of that vision run out of me on the ground. You could, listen, ladies and gentlemen, you could be believing for a healing and your faith get really high and you'll tell one person too many and they'll suck the life right out of your healing and you're, you'll think it's not possible anymore. It's not gonna happen. You gotta carry it like a baby. Would you let anybody touch your baby? You don't let anybody touch your promise. That's why you need people of like precious faith. And I'm going to touch this just for a minute. If you're a person that needs approval all the time, it's hard to have faith. Because you keep taking your wonderful vision, and it's a virgin vision, and you keep taking it to people and wanting their approval, and when you're done with them, you won't even think you had a vision. It'll be your stolen from you, your marriage, your kids, your promise, your healing, your money, whatever it is, because you're subjecting it to somebody who just heard thunder. Remember when Jesus, they said, I believe I heard it sound like thunder. God's talking to Jesus, but other people can't hear it. There are things that only you can hear. That's just the way it works. God keeps everybody in faith. You realize that, okay, I, I, I'm leading, right? Well, I hope, I hope you think I am. I'm leading. Do you really think I know exactly where I'm going all the time? I hope not. <laughs> I don't mean that as an insult to myself, but I hope you don't think. All I know is I'm following. Amen. By faith, and you are supposed to follow me by faith. That's why you can't poke at me and go, well, what about this? What are you going to do about that? I want to say, I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to go spend time with God. He might tell me in the morning what he wants me to do. Now, I do, now the thing is, you cannot use that for squirrely character. You better be dependable, you better be stable, and you better be faithful. You can't use your squirrely character. You never know what God's going to do and expect people to follow you. You got to be there because the, they, they latch on to stability too. You have to have the character. Are, are you with me? Those of you who are yes, leaders in your house. Yes, God. You ever talk to somebody, I'm led in the spirit. They don't have no sense. They're not under nobody. don't have a pastor. They're just led in the spirit. They're all over the place. You can't follow that. There is protocol even in faith. There's protocol in faith. Yes, God, yes, God. God is, wants to take us. God wants, I know this, I'm not saying this to sell you on anything. Deep down, I know we're supposed to have a global ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Wasn't my idea. Yes, God. Anybody that knows me, really knows me, knows I don't like to be high profile. I would just as soon blend in I hope this don't sound bad. I used to fix cars in my garage and drink beer by myself. I didn't need to talk to nobody. I hope that don't sound bad. <laughs> but before I got a hold of God, I asked my wife, I could be by myself working in the garage all day and working, and it didn't bother me. I didn't have to have no people around. By nature, I just don't need a lot of that. The whole thing is, the whole vision is contrary to my, my first nature. But you see, I don't have that nature. I got a new nature. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's a war. Amen. The new nature. 
And God gives you the new nature with the new man. That's the man that inherits promises. That person's the one that inherits the promises. I'm teaching faith. The reason we're teaching faith recently, because I believe we need to have faith, healing, and deliverance. Hallelujah. This morning, I was going to tell you, it's time to start inviting addicted people amen. to church. Come on, amen. Now, I didn't tell you they're all of a sudden they're going to get delivered next Tuesday at 9. They will get delivered. But if they hang around the deliverance anointing, Hallelujah. God will begin to work with them and God will begin to set them up to get delivered from the devils. God's wanting to, to reach people and get them delivered. And then he wants to, you know, when you del get delivered, you've got to get a new mindset. Just because you got delivered, if you don't get a new brain, a new mindset, and re your mind renewed in the things of God, you'll still battle the addiction even after you've been delivered because your head don't know. That's why you got to spend time. If you're addicted to, to pornography or anything, when you take it out, you got to start putting something in. You can't just, you can't just control your behavior. you got to get it in your heart. See, People that live by faith don't do it because they control themselves. They really are that person. See, if you're just acting and you're not that person, you don't have the power yet. But as you become renewed and your spirit becomes renewed, you, you become that person. You don't do right because you have to. You do right because you want to do right. The want to changes. How many of you can use a want to change? Ooh, glory, hallelujah. That's, you want to start, it, how about just wanting to treat your mate different? You got to want to. The want to, God's working on the want to. You can't discipline your way into a victory. It sounds like you can, but that's religious. You have to become the person that is victorious. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Then the devil is intimidated by you. You know, I was thinking, Lester Summerall used to say, if the devil says, don't go in there, there's a boogeyman in that room. Lester says, I go over and kick the door in. Amen. <laughs> in other words, I don't get afraid. That's right. I kick the door in. Amen. The devil is trying to scare us out of everything. How many of you ever wake up with like an ominous feeling? Why? Because we're in a war. Right. Right. Oh, you, I, I know I'm using my own life. You don't know how many days I got up at 3.30 in the morning to drive to Cleveland to buy cars twice a week. Every morning at 3.30 when, when I got up, I promise you, I'm not kidding. You know there ain't going to be no cars there for you to buy. You're going to spend eight hours today in the car. You laugh. That's a long journey, eight hours a day, to come back empty-handed. Always something was never going to work. Always something wasn't going to get bought. Always something wasn't going to get sold. Always something was going to go wrong. You're driving along. If you do that, you know your wife's going to be mad at you. You're going to get home in time. Your kids are going to be mad at you because you're not around. You know you're not going to buy nothing. It's a war. Hallelujah. Every day. Every day. How do you win? One day at a time. Amen. One day at a time. You know, uh, you know when it's the devil... When you, when, you, when you have that fight, when he's talking to you, if somebody tells you something that's positive for your life and the devil starts talking to you afterwards, that's evidence that he's there. Are you with me? You have to settle a few things to win. First of all, that God never lies. Right? God's word is true. Second, that his structure works. That means husband, wife, pastor, sheep, daddy, kids, 
Do you understand all that's from God? And do you know why the devil's getting such a grip? He eroded the structure. He eroded the marriages. And when, you, when he eroded the marriages, the landmarks are moved. And without the structure, it's not going to work. If I was the devil, I would try to get every man out of the house that I could. Because once the king and the priest is gone, everybody is vulnerable and he destroys their lives from... Ladies, you having trouble with your man? Start praying for your man because you need that man in that house because that's God's structure. Don't, if the devil talks you out of the man, he'll talk you out of something else because the devil's a liar. Pray that your man gets better instead of evicted because... There's another man that got different bondage that'll turn up in your life later. Same with the women. You probably think that's being hard. It's not. You live long enough, you see that people run cycles and how many times they get married and how they end up with the same one they had before. It's just a different face. They have the same issues. You might as well plant your feet right where you're at, dig in, and start fighting. Fight for your marriages, fight for your kids. The Bible says, I sought for a man that would stand in the gap. You know, I, I'm, Lester's on my mind today, obviously. He was talking about Smith Wigglesworth. And he said that Smith Wigglesworth, those of you who do not know who Smith Wigglesworth was, he was a plumber. He got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost became one of the most powerful men of God probably on the planet. I don't know. There's probably other people, but he was tough. I mean, he had 20 or 21 resurrections from the dead. Miracles, people getting feet, people getting all kinds of things, healed of cancers, tumors coming out of people, all kinds of things. And Lester said about Smith Wigglesworth was, he said, he was so devoted to a Christian life, that it was hard to get him to say anything bad about anybody ever. He lived in a place, he was, Lester put it this way, he was so far ahead of us. He lived in a place where he never said anything bad about anybody with words. He said he was way ahead of us. He refused to do it. And when I read that, I thought to myself, we talk about faith, but faith only works by love. And he understood the only way to have faith was to stay in love. Your faith works by love. So if I can get you to hate or dislike, I can steal your power. Right. You think you're fighting for products, you're fighting for your, your heart. See, what I was saying earlier is, your faith comes out of your heart. It was really Wigglesworth's pure heart that caused his faith to work. It wasn't his religious disciplines. I will not, I will, I will not, I will. Actually, as far as religion goes, he would be highly criticized today because he was very unorthodox. I mean, he'd hold dead people and hold them up against the wall until they come back to life. How many of you let that... Let the preacher come into your house and hold your husband against the wall while he's dead and let the preacher start speaking to him and trying to bring him back to life. Don't nod your head because you don't know. How many of you could stand to watch such unorthodox ways and methods? See, most people are so worried about what their neighbor thinks, they don't even do what they're supposed to do. It's, would you march around the walls of Jericho and shout and not be ashamed. Would you go and get the gold out of the field? Would you go fishing while the tax collectors are coming? Because there's going to be a group of people who are probably right in the natural. You know he ain't doing nothing about his circumstances. He went fishing. He's crazy. He got that temple tax due and here he is fishing. Now, it might sound funny, but do you realize how many scenarios are like that when you follow God? 
you're going to be asked to do things that you're going to cause a lot of criticism. And if you are subject to the approval of people, you won't follow God. That's why he trains you in the little things that are an embarrassment. You know how you had those things God asked you to do and you were glad they were over with you, did them, but you don't want to do them again? Well, he's going to give you a bigger one until he eradicates that. Because, see, he needs you to believe big if he's going to get something done. And if you're limited to somebody else's head, you're not going to be very fruitful. So he will give you somebody whose head is ridiculous until you don't need its approval anymore. Did anybody hear what I said? He will give, you won't, they'll make the tight, the noose so tight that you can't keep the rules. So you get over needing approval. So you're free. Freedom is God. I didn't say you shouldn't be honorable. I didn't say you shouldn't treat people right. But free from what people think allows God to work in your life. I'll say it. I didn't want to. I hate talking about my own life sometimes. Hey, look, I've said this to you before. I failed everything in school at least once. I know I did. This is embarrassing. I never got a report card without an F on it ever. Not one. Not one. I, I told you this one time. I've been written off so much by so many people. I had the privilege of being myself. Amen. I don't know if you understand what I said or not. I've been written off enough early in life that I had to get out of my head what everybody thought I should be doing because this sounds so bad. I knew I wasn't going to make the grade. So I became who I was. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. It's the best thing that ever happened to me is I didn't fit in college. I didn't fit in the square. I didn't fit in the box. T.D. Jake said this, you're not supposed to fit in what you're supposed to change in. Anyway.